Okay, we've been using a certain aspect of squeak small talk for quite some time without actually explaining what it is. If you wanted to follow the tutorials, you simply typed in what I typed in and evaluated it, and it would work. But perhaps we should explain now what a block of code is, sometimes called a block closure, sometimes called a lambda, lambda expression. It's basically code inside an object. This entire thing surrounded by the square brackets is considered an object, and we can actually inspect that object. Let's inspect it. I had my, my squeak window is now covering two screens, so you couldn't see it originally. And you see it's a block closure. It's called block closure. Now it doesn't give you much in useful information, but you can see that Squeak considers it an object. So what can we do with this object? Well this particular object is being sent to my dictionary and it's basically saying with all the associations inside my dictionary do this block of code. Well we can do this block of code outside. Let's erase this so you can see it better. And the way to actually execute a block of code is you have to pass in a value if it says there's going to be a value. I'll explain that more in a second. And now we'll pass in the value 7. And we evaluate it. Do it. And sure enough, a 7 is sent into this block of code, taking the name value, and the 7 is now sent to transcript show, which shows it. So transcript show value, value 7. Now we don't need to have a value. Instead, we could have no internal variables at all. And we could simply say 27, transcript show 27. And then we would say, if we just evaluate this or do it, nothing happens. Any more than if you simply evaluate dictionary by itself, nothing more expected. It doesn't know what to do with dictionary. It knows what to do with dictionary in a message. It knows what to do, and, and that message could include inspect. But it doesn't know what to do with the object dictionary by itself. Likewise, Squeak doesn't know what to do with transcript show. It's just itself. So we pass in a message, we send the message value. Notice no colon, nothing after it. That just means basically execute this block of code. So now we do it, and sure enough, this block of code is executed. Now, we saw how to create an input variable. Let's see how to create what they call a local variable. My loc. Now we're going to have two lines of code. First line is my loc colon equals 15. Or let's make it text so we can see it's versatile. Equals text, period. Transcript show my loc. Now when we do this by sending it a value message and then doing it, you see it prints out text. So let's, let's try to make things a little bit more interesting. Let's say pass in a variable, call it sum text, and now pass in
a space. Stretch it out more so you can see. Make sure to put a single quote there. And now we're going to say some text, transcript show, some text, comma, my text. Recall that get rid of that. Recall that when you place two text variables or two text objects next to each other with a comma in between them, uh, Smalltalk knows to combine them. So if I had no typos, we do it. And sure enough, a text is printed because it took the value was passed in, the text object was passed in, and placed into this input variable, some text. And then some text was combined with my loc, my local variable, and passed as parameter to the message transcript show. Pretty interesting, huh? It means you can pass in code as a message to an object, which is what we've been doing all along. For instance, one, two, 10 do well actually there's an object here 2 10 gets passed to the integer 1 and returns an object let's inspect that object that object is called an interval 1 to 10 it starts at 1 it stops at 10 it steps at 1 If we print it, we can get that. So objects are being used all over the place without you even knowing. So let's see, is there anything else we want to show about objects? Yes. Or blocks of code? Yes. My block colon equals that. Now we've created a variable, my block, which contains this. What happens if we evaluate it? My block value thirty-three, and then we do it. It actually takes the code in this block and evaluates it with the variable we passed in, which is 33. Now you see what happens with all these different things. When you, when you see a colon and then a block of code, that block of code is being sent to the object, and the object is doing something with that block of code. My dictionary key values value do is that what we have said it was my dictionary keys and not do but do my dictionary keys do now it's going to go into, it's going to send the message keys do to my dictionary, correct the spelling, and the message includes this block of code, which my dictionary actually executes as part of the keys do message. So again, oops, undefined, I got an undefined. Um, message or message not understood undefined object again that went off screen because I have two screens up right now message not understood we know it's not understood we know why it's not understood I never defined my dictionary so my dict which was already defined notice the error message is also put up here so let's get rid of it and sure enough we get my dictionary 
keys, the entire list. And they're printed out, transcript show, value, carriage return, one after another. 